Should you find yourself in Terminal B at Newark Airport, look up. Those aren't just new lights, they're smart lights. A sophisticated array of LED fixtures with built-in sensors and cameras connected over a wireless network. They monitor security, the flow of foot traffic. Beginning in the fall of 2018, telecommunications companies began rolling out their fifth generation, or 5G, cellular networks. These networks will allow the future envisioned in sci-fi fantasies to finally come to life. But will this technological world of the future turn into a digital dystopia? 5G will herald what has come to be known as the Internet of Things. The IoT is the name for the growing list of interconnected digital smart devices. This includes everything from cell phones, coffee makers, washing machines, headphones, lamps, wearable devices, and almost anything else you can think of. The concept of the Internet of Things has been around for years, but now that 5G is coming to fruition, we will see an explosion of thousands of devices sending all types of data to each other. This will lead to what some have called a digital smog, or soup, due to the electromagnetic radiation released by these devices and the new infrastructure needed to make the 5G smart grid function. Despite a growing number of people expressing their concerns around health and calls for more studies, the 5G network has been rolling out across the United States. Now that the rollout seems inevitable, it might be prudent to take a moment to see what the various corporations pushing the 5G smart grid have in mind. Let's take a look at Samsung's 5G digital city in Korea. A writer with Forbes describes how 5G hotspots demonstrate how quickly a person in a moving vehicle could download and upload large files to the network. They envision sporting venues using 5G hot zones to deliver personalized video feeds of a customer's favorite player to their mobile device or allow healthcare providers to test assisted surgery with augmented and virtual reality. Other use cases for the smart city technology include CCTV, traffic control, and smart lighting where environmentally friendly lights automatically turn off when no one is nearby. Noticeably missing from this endorsement of Samsung's privacy list city is the fact that these CCTV cameras and devices are recording 24 hours a day and are capable of notifying law enforcement if someone jaywalks, speeds, or whatever other behavior the Crown has deemed illegal. Let's take a look at another example of a smart city. Quayside is a smart city located on 12 acres of waterfront property southeast of downtown Toronto in Canada. Quayside represents a joint effort by the Canadian government agency Waterfront Toronto and Sidewalk Labs, which is owned by Google's parent company Alphabet Inc. The vision is for a data-driven community complete with self-driving cars and other elements of a smart neighborhood. Sidewalk Labs claims Quayside will solve traffic congestion, rising home prices, and environmental pollution. Unfortunately, Residents of Quayside will be accessing a centralized identity management system through which they access public services such as library cards and health care. However, there has been some resistance. Recently, Anne Kavokian, one of Canada's leading privacy experts and Ontario's former privacy commissioner, became the latest person to resign from the project. I was hired by Sidewalk Labs to embed privacy by design into all of the smart city operations. This is, I developed privacy by design years ago. It's a framework of proactively embedding much needed privacy protective measures into the design of the smart city. Now, normally that would involve obtaining the positive consent of the residents of the city, but we know that's not possible here because the data will be collected automatically by sensors and other technologies. So the opportunity for consent doesn't exist. She later learned that third parties would be able to access identifiable information gathered at Quayside. Besides the health and privacy concerns, we must consider what the rollout of this technology means for someone who does not consent to the technology. They simply can't go in their homes or easily opt out of it if it's everywhere. Julie Dorenzo, a real estate developer who left Waterfront's board in July, told the AP that she wanted to know if those who didn't opt into the city would be told that they couldn't live there. As one Toronto journalist wrote, it's one thing to willingly install Alexa in your home. It's another when publicly owned infrastructure, streets, bridges, parks and plazas is Alexa, so to speak. What does this mean moving forward? We must alert everyone and anyone willing to listen to the health, privacy and freedom concerns related to the rollout of the 5G surveillance smart grid. Otherwise, there is no hope for saving privacy. Please visit theconsciousresistance.com to find out more about the 5G rollout. This is one of just a few places in the country where a smart light network has been installed. The Silicon Valley building uses it primarily for security. 
And here's how it works. There are 40 lamp posts in this lot holding 83 LED lights connected to seven cameras in a seamless grid that is tracking and recording my every move. So we do use the license plate recognition and we also can detect people. 